now we are coming to Jonas Lund. Uh, probably many of you know him here. If you come from the young generation, he is an educated artist and well known. He studied in, in Amsterdam. <coughs> Uh, he is critically reflecting on contemporary network systems and power uh, structures. He will delve with, with us into the convergence of generative AI and DAOs. Uh, well, these are these uh, uh, strange new things in the black blockchain. And I'm really looking forward to his presentation. He named it Autonomous Concepts. Keep in mind, for those who are the old generation, um, this is the subject of, of the autonomous systems, uh, remembering about that, uh, and the effects to the art world, but also to society and mankind. Jonas, it, I'm proud to have you here on stage, um, and welcome. Hi, everybody. I can't see you because of the light. Uh, super nice to be here. I have prepared a presentation which has 72 slides. I have to start the timer. Uh, I have 20 minutes. And I have a video that's two and a half minutes, so that means we have about 12 seconds per slide, uh, which is good. And also, I have to say that the presentation, the order of works is not made by me, but it's made by a sort of randomizing algorithm. So we c I can make the claim that it's a generative presentation. Um, anyways, it will make a sort of broad overview of my work over the last uh, 12 years or so, making different types of works based largely in different types of rule-based systems, uh, from algorithms to contract law to kind of uh, artistic trickery, let's say. Okay, and away we go. I love the idea of using technology to improve lives. So this is a smart burn contract. I wonder if it will play, yeah. Uh, the owner of this NFT must donate 5% of their yearly profits to a charitable cause once a year in perpetuity. Documentation to be provided at smartcontracts.host to avoid having this NFT burned. Uh, the owner of this NFT must go on vacation for two weeks once a year in perpetuity. Documentation to be provided to avoid, so essentially an artwork that puts obligations on the owner slash collector, failure to adhere to the contract uh, results in an NFT that gets burned and sent to the null address. Uh, it's a series of 21 pieces. The gray signifies that it's been burned. The owner of this NFT must resell this NFT once a month in perpetuity. The collector struggled sending it between wallets once a month until he just said like, okay, nah, that's it. The owner of this NFT may not sell any works from their collection continuously in perpetuity. It's in the collection of Centre Pompidou in Paris, meaning that they are not allowed to sell anything from their 120,000 work collection, uh, which is good. Which is a common right-wing talking point that the Pompidou should be self-financing itself by selling their collection. So <laughs> they may no longer do it. By opening this book, you agree to all of the following terms. And uh, you only know what the terms you agreed to are when you open the book. <laughs> Inside there's a seed phrase, six words, that takes you to a website. You put in the seed phrase, you are presented with the terms. Some are good, some are uh, neutral, some are less good. It uh, is a limited edition of 100, uh, which sold out within two weeks, and so far five books have been opened. So I think it's a collectible that you just keep. <laughs> terms of service. Terms of service is a contractual text-based work that says, by entering the gallery, you agree to all of the following terms. You agree to carefully look, consider, and appreciate all the artworks displayed in the gallery. You agree that your voice and appearance may be recorded while you're visiting the gallery. You are granting gallery curator and artist permission to use your recorded likeness in all media in perpetuity. You agree to follow Jonas Lund on Instagram. You agree to share a minimum of one image of exhibition in one of the social media platforms described in paragraph five. And so it continues. Prototype artwork from 2015, strings attached. This painting must be resold by March 21, 2017. This painting may only be purchased by a collector who agrees to purchase two more works by the artist before March 21, 2017. 
This is a duo. This painting may only be purchased by a collector who also agrees to purchase donation. This painting may only be purchased by a collector who will donate it to one of the following museums by March 21, 2020. Moderna, MoMA, Tate, Hamburger Bahnhof, LACMA, and Stedelijk. Also known as how to get your painting into the museum. <laughs> I'm amazed that worked. It's, it's incredible. We're building a new world together. Fear of Missing Out is a seminal work from my artistic practice from 2013, which was uh, the result. I wrote an algorithm that would output instructions for how to put together works of art based on a data set that I scraped together by Artfacts, Artnet, Eflux, Mutual Art, and compiled the data set, wrote a predictive algorithm, produced instructions for how to make successful works of art, including Steve Ballmer former CEO of Microsoft, currently Richard and Bill Gates. Studio practice following a live streamed gallery installation with four, six, four assistants hired full time to work during gallery opening hours. The becomes obvious after this presentation that I like to write contracts. Contracts is somehow the quintessential material of the world. We are on 15 minutes remaining. And I think it's okay. Uh, so, because also the contract can explain everything. It's like black on white, these are the rules, this is the result. We can think of all the works I'm showing as sort of generative art in a certain sense, that there are certain systems with some level of autonomy. I think a contract is, works in the same way. It defines the rules, and then the contract performs its laws and rules upon the participant. I think studio practice is an excellent example of this. It is uh, described, the whole piece is described through the employment contract between me, the gallery, and the assistant. It says, at the signing of this agreement, artist and assistant agree that artist will hire assistant for a six week period commencing on August 20th, 2014, ending October 1st. Assistant will work four work days per week, commencing each day at one o'clock, finishing at six o'clock. During the work period, assistant will be employed to produce artworks for artists inspired by the guidelines set out in a 300-page book that artists will provide. All work shall take place at gallery, and assistant is strictly prohibited from claiming any authorship of the produced artworks. Assistant is prohibited from discussing, documenting, photographing, or sharing information or images in any forum, public or private, including but not limited to social platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The works are produced in the studio, uploaded on the website, appraised by an advisory board. Based on their appraisal, me, the artist, decide whether it should become a work of Jonas Lund or if it should be destroyed. The red signifies destruction. I think this is a generative artwork in the most abstract sense of the word. Like you outsource all the production to assistants inspired by a book, how to make art, and then out comes process-based abstraction. This was in 2014 when like zombie formalism was a big thing. So that's, that's, it, that's it basically. It's, uh, untitled, the final decision. While it's probably the best from the spray series painted black with cooked spaghetti, it still feels far, far from a mature piece, more like bland pasta, needs more salt. It was determined to be destroyed. In the end, only four works out of 100 produced over a six week period were signed, which were the drop cloths on the floor, where all the remnants of the assistant's attempts at making successful abstractions were. It felt like the perfect summary of such an endeavor. In 2014, I made a series of 40 paintings with GPS trackers on the stretcher bars, including terms of ownership, to track them as they spread around the art market. At the height of the flipping, 10 years ago, right, before NFT flipping was a thing, there was something like traditional painting flipping, which was like the proto thing, which includes a lot of strange uh, agreements onto the collector. They were, the paintings were sort of a result of a generative process, a large data set of all the different process-based abstractions slash zombie formalist paintings at the time were selected due to particular criteria and then photoshopped together into new abstractions. And then on the website, you can see their locations in real time where they are in the world. So it starts at Steve Turner, travels to Los Angeles, ends up in West Hollywood. That was a short journey. We take your privacy and well-being very seriously. 
In the uh, same year, viewer improved painting is using a gaze tracker between uh, A and B, left and right, to continuously optimize abstractions. If you're looking left, it's, uh, the left side is sort of leading. If you're looking right, the right side is leading. It's a like typical A-B test used a lot online, here applied inside the gallery. Critical Mass 2017 is a sort of speculative exhibition space where everything that happened in the gallery was the result of the crowd, the critical mass, through the interface uh, that was custom built at the time, where everybody could gain agency through leveling up on this sort of gamified exhibition exploration and sort of increase your agency to take control. I think we're doing well for our 72 slides. In uh, 2017, I made a chatbot version of myself called Talk To Me, trained on all my text message history of the last four years, which was like a sequence-to-sequence -sequence Python structure. This was the official story. The unofficial story was that I was, how do I go back? Yeah, there. The unofficial story was that I was continuously just answering messages manually <laughs> for two and a half years, which was like unbelievably taxing. The consequence of AI mishaps could be catastrophic for humanity. It resulted in this, which was the complete archive of talktome.club, which was like one and a half million messages over a two and a half year period. And uh, it was the most interesting sort of embodiment of, like this is obviously pre-chat GPT large language models, to embody the AI, right? To get Turing tested as a human by everybody who writes, it's like, wow, you're a really smart chatbot. <laughs> And be like, oh, but it's me. And then that dynamic <laughs> continues. Because the original data set chatbot I made based on myself was such a depressing entity that this was a much better solution. It's like the mechanical Turk embodied into a chatbot. I've always been fascinated by the intersection of health and technology. Uh, the more recent MVP, which draws on all the previous works, which is a, a partially genetic slash generative system, which optimizes abstract compositions based on collector's choice. Uh, a series of 512 slowly sort of morphing to the MVP, which would be the most valuable painting or the minimally viable product, I guess. Uh, so here, this is from a solo show called Studio Visit, How to Make Art in the Age of Algorithms at Francisco Carolinium, which was two years almost ago. There it's explained. And then you can see the sort of hierarchy of the fitness score of each composition. And then here you get an overview of how they uh, operate. We can shape the world to our desires. Jonas Lund Token is an ongoing project since 2018 where I tokenized my artistic practice at the Centralized Autonomous Organization. I minted 100,000 voting shares in my artistic practice where you, as the token holder, of which in, here, in this room there are many, uh, you get agency over what I should do, like strategic decision making for an artistic career. Right? It's, uh, uh, again, comes with the terms of ownership. Uh, which describes exactly what, as the owner, you get and what's your obligations and what's your reward. Uh, it has taken many different shapes and forms over the years. Uh, it's sort of um, trying to reach consensus across a sort of abstract notion of how do you determine what's a valuable work of art and what's a successful work of art and how you position a career for sort of maximum network transition is something that is trying to be worked out through this project. It's uh, also one of the projects that make me feel sort of uh, uh, continuously guilty because it's sort of a one-man corporation. It's not a decentralized autonomous organization at all. It's like a centralized individual organization because I do everything. <laughs> and I have very little time over for consulting the board, but there's around 250 board members at the moment. <laughs> and they are sort of it's a long-running project, right? It's been running for six years already. And the red telephone, by the way, it's been automatic programmed to call me whenever. It's, in, it's like the red hotline for Jonas. And it's uh, taken many different shapes and forms over the years, both in like sort of uh, decentralized situations. Also this here is with the Global Gallery with Annika Meyer and Koenig Gallery and Porsche, I guess. So there's also sort of uh, 
abstract uh, virtual universe for the UNAS Loon Token universe. Here's also in Francisco Carolinium, proof of work maybe, proof of art show. Uh, and also it exists as a sort of generative, procedurally generative kind of uh, space where me run around, look for things in search of ideas. Uh, sort of a randomly programmed bot that just goes and be like, okay, can I find the idea under this rock? Or is the animal over there nice? And it's very emo, me playing the guitar, kind of like, yeah, see? It's uh, perpetually unlaunched, that project. Uh, my favorite part of the Jonas Lund Token project is the Jonas Lund Token Bounties, where it materializes into an alternative economy, where you get favors for, like, favor for a favor. Do a good review of a show, you can get rewarded with tokens. Basically, it's a way to uh, sort of bring everybody I work with on board, like, and there's a record of everybody who was, uh, like, fulfilled it. The latest iteration of the Jonas Lund Token is the Jonas Lund Token Futures, which is, uh, uh, yeah, this is a good uh, couple of slides. It just comes closer and closer. Jonas Lund Token Futures is a futures commodities contract, but for paintings or any other work, it, this was my way of, quote, unquote, buying myself paternity leave because I recently had a, a baby. Uh, so then how can I work without working? So this is a Jonas Lund Token Futures, which will materialize as a painting in that particular size in September 2028. So it's a way to sort of bet on the future value of the Jonas Lund token and of my work, my market, things like that. It also comes with a fine print, like on the back side is like the details. Important things such as uh, dispute resolution, risk and volatility. In the event of the artist passing, this contract will not expire and will remain as a futures contract in perpetuity. And also how to evaluate the quality standards and all these things. Um, Finally, our goal has been reached after all this hard work. That's perfect. <laughs> so this is a two and a half minute excerpt from a film called The Future of Something. The screenshots in between is from the sequel called The Future of Life. So I will show this and then wrap up. I've done everything right. Posting consistently, engaging with my followers, staying up to date with the latest trends. And still, the algorithm doesn't treat me nicely anymore. I feel like I've been played, like I've wasted all my time and energy chasing after something that doesn't matter. Kim nods in empathy, feeling the same pain. Carla, on the other hand, looks resentful and bitter. You two have no idea. I was there from the beginning, putting in the work when nobody cared about influencers, and now the algorithm treats me like I'm nothing. It's like everything I worked for has mm. been for nothing. Dan, the moderator of the support group, tries to lighten the mood. Well, maybe it's time to take the algorithm out on a date. Show it how much you care. Mel shoots him a death glare, her temper boiling over. This isn't funny, Dan. You don't have to deal with this like we do. You don't have to feel like you're fighting against an unknown enemy that doesn't play by any rules. We're being replaced by machines that don't care about authenticity or creativity. It's like we're not even needed anymore. Carla snorts disbelievingly. Uh, this is all a joke. We're all just puppets dancing to the tune of some tech guys somewhere pulling the strings without caring about the real people behind the screens. The silence in the room is heavy as everyone contemplates the harsh reality of their situation. A, I think I can help. Everyone in the support group turns to Dan, their interest peaked. How could you possibly help us? You're just a moderator for a support group. And well, I'm also an influencer, just like you guys. And I have a YouTube channel where I share all my tips and tricks to get ahead in the game. Um, I've been studying the algorithm for years, and I know exactly how to beat it. The group looks at each other, unsure if they want to listen to Dan. You're just telling us to subscribe to your YouTube channel? <laughs> oh, great. Just what we need. Another influencer trying to tell us how to do our job. Hear me out. I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I do know some secrets that could help you get ahead. And if we, we band together and share our knowledge, we could take on this algorithm and beat it at its own game. I don't know, Dan. It sounds a little sketchy. Trust me, guys, we can do this together. Just subscribe to my channel and I'll teach you everything you need to know. The group looks at each other. Then one by one, they pull out their phones and start subscribing to Dan's YouTube channel. As they do, their faces light up with excitement. Finally, they have something to get a leg up on the algorithm. This is the last slide which is the final 
uh, I don't know what we call it, but he says, I thought having the world know my name would be enough. And it's one minute to go, and I will donate it to the room. Thank you so much.